Remember when Raisins were the hottest musical act in the country? Books! Check them out! Books! Check them out! Let's go back. Tamagotchi the Y2K. Tonight on VH1's Behind the Music. They were a superstar band of the 1980s, but addiction and conflict would lead to their demise. Drugs were everywhere. We find out what happened to the California Raisins. It was about balls against the walls. It was about slamming the best looking group you could get your hands on. Okay, none of that's really true. So let's get to the real story of the California Raisins. The year is 1986. The hottest comedian is Robin Williams. Andy Warhol paints the cover of Aretha Franklin's album, which would be his last piece. And Cleveland hosts Balloon Fest, and the most Cleveland thing that could happen happens, with 1.5 million balloons ending up causing millions of dollars worth of damage to the city. If you follow my channel, you'll know that this is also when Al Capone's vault was opened. Dallas fans are disappointed to find out that it was all a dream, and the California Raisins make their commercial debut. On June 19th, those watching a rerun of Cheers may have been greeted by a sun-made commercial featuring R&B claymation raisins singing Marvin Gaye's I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Get it? Because they're raisins. The lead vocals were sung by former member of Jimi Hendrix's Band of Gypsies, Buddy Miles, and this one 30-second ad would turn into a pop culture phenomenon of the late 80s and early 90s. This is the man behind the iconic commercial, Will Vinton. Vinton is a legend in the world of animation. He has produced the PJs, created the Domino's mascot, the Noid, and is responsible for this disturbing scene from the adventures of Mark Twain. What's your name? Satan. Uh-oh. You're damn right, uh-oh. I'm gonna have to sleep with the lights on for another week. Something about these singing raisins clicked with viewers. The next year, a fan club was formed complete with a membership card and a newsletter called the Grapevine Gazette. 1987 is when the California raisins really exploded. You might even say they were raising the bar for commercial mascots. <laughs> ah, what? I thought that was a grape joke. <laughs> somebody stop me. <laughs> no, seriously though, could somebody please come here and stop me? Their first album called The California Raisins Sing the Hit Songs is released, featuring covers of songs like Heartbreak Hotel, Stand By Me, Respect, and their crown jewel, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Once the album was released, the California Raisins began to expand beyond their commercial and musical origins. A 3D comic book was released, the story centering around the four Raisins fighting against the Big Burger and his fast food sidekicks as they tried to take over Raisinville. There were lunch boxes, notebooks, clothing, posters, bed sheets, Halloween costumes. They even starred in their own film called Raisin Arizona. Okay, that last one isn't true, but come on, that's a missed opportunity right there. But the crown jewel for the California Raisins were their figurines. Hardee's offered figurines with their cinnamon and raisin biscuits, and then later KFC offered their own figurines of the four. This is how I found out about the California Raisins. My grandfather used to have the four of them sitting on his desk in his office. At that time, I probably didn't even know that they were meant to be raisins. To me, they were just weird creatures who played instruments. I mean, let's be honest, they look like little turds. Anyway. The incredible year that this fictitious group of dehydrated grapes was topped off on December 21st with CBS's Emmy Award winning Christmas special, A Claymation Christmas Celebration. The show debuted alongside A Garfield Christmas and was co-hosted by Rex and Herb, two dinosaur characters created by Will Vinton for Dinosaurs A Fun-Filled Trip Back in Time. What could be more Christmassy than a thick stack of syrup-drenched waffles? <laughs> it featured different claymation characters singing Christmas carols, and the main event was the California Raisins singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in the style of The Temptations. In January of 1988, the California Raisins accomplished something incredible. Their version of I Heard It Through the Grapevine reached Billboard's Hot 100 list, peaking at number 84. They turned their success into a collaboration with a music heavyweight, their next commercial enlisted the help of Ray Charles. The commercial featured a claymation Ray Charles singing I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Imagine your only hit song being one you didn't even come up with? These raisins are the alien ant farm of commercials, but with more success. I'm sure you know where this stardom trajectory is headed next. It's very obvious. Come on, say it with me. California Raisins Ice Capades. See? We're on the same wavelength here. This was probably my favorite clip I came across while doing research. 
you can tell the people dressed as the raisins have no business being on skates, so they just stand there while others skate around them. The California Raisins' mainstream success continued on a roll throughout 1988. They had three new albums released within the year, Christmas with the California Raisins, Sweet, Delicious, and Marvelous, and my favorite being this spoof of the Beatles called Meet the Raisins. By the way, all of their albums, excluding the Christmas one, feature the song I Heard It Through the Grapevine. That's like every time Chumbawamba releases an album, it has tub thumping on it. Chumbawamba's playing, it's not even tub thumping. Next, they jumped into gaming and had a PC game where you can control one of the raisins as they navigate a cereal factory in an attempt to rescue all of his captured friends. Honestly, it seems a little bit complicated. Just watching a playthrough nearly gave me a seizure. Just like the year before, the California Raisins finished off their year with another CBS special on November 4th called Meet the Raisins. And did I watch it all? You bet your ass I did. Let me sum it up for you. The show is hosted by this carrot, and we learn the Raisins' names. AC is the lead vocals, his brother Bebop on drums, Stretch on bass, and Red on guitar and piano. The mockumentary takes us through their love of music as kids to the talent show they competed on where they got their first break. The name of their band is The Vinyls, and their manager is Rudy Bagaman. Get it? The puns are strong in this special. The band has their ups and downs, sinking as low as doing elevator music. They start to do singing movies like Ben Herb, The Good, The Bad, and The Wrinkled, and Star Truck. Not sure what the pun is meant to be on that last one. Is it because raisins and grapes are loaded onto trucks sometimes? I, I don't know. Anyway, they rise back up to superstardom, and I found this adorable dancing penguin. Someone needs to make a gif of this. A gif? However you say it. In 1989, the Raisins were featured in a commercial with the King of Pop himself, Michael Jackson. But this commercial really was the peak for the California Raisins, as the novelty began to wear thin on the public. By the end of the year, the California Raisins show premiered on CBS, it became part of their Saturday morning cartoon lineup, and was a direct spin-off of the special Meet the Raisins. But this time it was in traditional hand-drawn animation. But it was cancelled in December 9th of the same year. Unfortunately, as all fads go, the California Raisins were pushed one last time in 1990 with another special on CBS called Raisins Sold Out, which it did have a lower rating than the original special, but still was fairly well received by fans. Then an NES game, The Great Escape, was in development, only to never be released. Luckily, someone was able to find an unreleased copy of the game and upload it for us all to see on YouTube. Then, in 1994, the California Raisins made their final appearance with the campaign shutting down on July 31st. The production costs for this campaign were nearly twice their earnings, and thus ended the pop culture phenomenon known as the California Raisins. Since fading into obscurity, there have been many reminders of their former commercial success throughout the years. The Simpsons spoofed the Raisins twice, and as recently as 2017. They made an appearance in 2014's Radio Shack Super Bowl ad, and even showed up in a very sunny Christmas special. To bookend the California Raisins' impact on the world, some of the figures used in the commercials are on display at the Smithsonian, preserved for generations to look back at this odd piece of pop culture history, right next to Bill Cosby's sweater, who is starting to resemble a raisin more himself these days anyway. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any ideas for some obscure pop culture history that is nostalgic just for you, be sure to comment below and I might make a video about it. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye!